31, welcome to example six. We're gonna find a formula for the nth term of the sequence a sub n shown in the graph. And then what are the domain and range? So I don't see anything here explicitly telling me it's arithmetic, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and see if we can find a pattern here. So if I take a look at this, my n's are along the x-axis and my a sub n's are along the y-axis. So again, this is the nth term of the sequence. So the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth, and actually it doesn't look like it goes beyond the fifth. I don't see another ordered pair here. And these are the actual nth term values. So for example, taking a look at this first ordered pair, one comma one, that is the graphical way of telling me a sub one is equal to one. All right, or if I start to write this sequence, I have a one. Let's take a look at the second ordered pair. It looks like the n value is two, but the a sub n value is three. So I know a sub two is equal to three. So I'll put that there. All right, so let's see, we've got a sub three, or I should say three, five. Let me plot these out. It looks like we have four, seven. And finally we have five, nine. All right, so let's take these ordered pairs and translate them into sequence terms. So a sub three, is equal to five, a sub four is equal to seven, and a sub five is equal to nine. So again, if we look, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth terms are respectively one, three, five, seven, nine, okay? Now when I look at that sequence, right, list of numbers, I can identify that it is arithmetic because I see that I'm adding a common difference to get from term to term. So when I look at this, I see, well, gosh, I can notice that D is two, right? And then it's always good to point out your first term, all right? And so another thing I'm taking note of is that this is an arithmetic sequence. Let me write it here, arithmetic sequence. And why that's important is because as soon as I recognize it's an arithmetic sequence, I get a nice little formula that I, I'm allowed to use Right? Then we know that a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And since I was asked to find a sub n, I, I'm almost there. I have the critical components, right? We always need a sub 1 and d, and I, I have both of them. So let's go ahead and play this out. a sub 1 was 1. I don't know what n is because I want the explicit formula. I want the nth term. And d was 2. Let's simplify this a little bit. We've got 1. This would be plus 2n minus 2. So I can rewrite this if I want as 2n minus 1. So there is my explicit formula. Okay, And let's just check and make sure it's working. If I were to plug in a sub 1, if n was 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, great. Let's just try a sub 5. If it was a sub 5, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 minus 1 is 9, great, that's working. All right, so let me go back to the original problem. Find a formula for the nth term of the sequence a sub n shown in the graph. I did it. Now, I didn't answer this. I have not answered what are the domain and the range of the sequence. So let's figure that out. Domain is always the values on the x-axis. Now, this is not a continuous function, right? Because I have to lift my pencil to go from this ordered pair to this ordered pair to this one to this one to this one. So I don't have intervals here. I'm just gonna make a list of numbers and the domain values were literally one, two, three, four, five. All right, and then the range, if we look at the y values, it was one, three, five, seven, nine. All right, fantastic. So with that, we're gonna move on to example seven. We're gonna keep on working these explicit formulas with arithmetic sequences. All right, I'll see you in a few, gang. Bye.